Welcome to Conversations with Toy, a blogcast tackling life one episode at a time. This is the time to air out life's craziest moments. This space is all about speaking about life's hang-ups and ways in which we can leave better than when we started. Topics are all about ways we can find space to be better in life, love, mental space and health. Happy Friday. I hope that you are having and have had the best week possible. If this is your first time tuning in with Conversations with Toy, welcome. I know that for a fact there's not a coincidence that you may have stumbled upon this particular episode. I just am a firm believer that nothing just happens by accident, that we are all guided to where we're supposed to be. With that thought process in mind, thank you for joining in. Make sure that you share this episode with another person, especially if you felt inspired, if it got you to feel a little differently about something, if it made you think a little differently about life and maybe the way you see things, share, share, share. That is how we grow by sharing and it costs free 99. It doesn't cost you a dime to share. So make sure that you share. If you don't know, I am Toy of Conversations with Toy. I am also a blogger, an influencer, writer, all the things. I have lots of titles and all kinds of things that come along with that. However, being on the podcast and being able to use my voice, I always hope that it's going to be effective to help someone else. And with today's particular episode, that's exactly what we're going to do. Before I do all of that, let's get into how this week has gone down. For me, this week was tough. Yes, I will say that again. This week has been tough. I'm not sure why, um, but it has been tough. I have been very transparent about my mental health and wellness and my journey, and I'm not going to stop anytime soon. And people, when I first started to talk about this, this was more on the blog than the podcast. By the time I transitioned over to a podcast, the blog was already seven years old, six years old. So... The reason why in the very beginning of the blog, when I was, you know, started the blog was everybody was just like, you're oversharing. You're telling too many people your business, right? And what was I telling people? I was telling people about my struggle with postpartum. I was telling people about my struggle and my, you know, certain things in my marriage. Now let's keep this 100. I'm not sharing all the nits and gritties of it, but if I feel like it's going to be something that's going to help another woman, another wife to be like, you know what? I'm not alone. I go through the same thing. I'm going to share it. And now it's amazing that years later, it's now become the thing to do is to be vulnerable and share your story. And storytelling is like an all time high. When I first did it, I wouldn't even call myself brave. I felt like it was just a way for me to use as an outlet and an outlet that I'm not ashamed of. So for all the ones that were saying, you know, you're oversharing, you're doing this, you're doing that. Thank you for telling me that because you are the fuel that guided the blog, which now has guided this podcast. Today, I want to talk about just some some first level things about mental wellness and mental health. And again, let me just stress that I am not a mental health um, professional. I am only giving you the information according to the things that I have been through. What I can truly suggest that you do is to get in contact with someone who can help you with that. Whether you start with your family doctor, which we'll talk about in a few moments, or you start off by seeking therapy, however you do it, I can only advocate that you do do it. Now, for all the people who say, I'm totally fine. I don't need to talk about those things. I don't need to see somebody for help. And I'm just perfectly good. You know, my life is all together. You know, I don't have any struggles or any issues. All I can say to that is high five friend. You have reach the holy mecca of being able to say that your life is put together. But for the rest of us, right? The rest of us who strive for good things in our life, right? We strive to make good decisions. We strive to live our best lives. And sometimes living our best lives means we sometimes have to take a step back. Sometimes we fall down. Sometimes we are stressed out. And sometimes we have to cry because that's just the reality of the world. So that's who I'm going to be here talking to because I don't have my life all together, right? And when I first started in my journey, and again, I'll say this started with postpartum depression, 
then discovered, girl, you got more than just some postpartum depression. You got some seasonal depression. You got some episodic depression. You got some things going on. Now, for all my church folks, when you hear me say that I have these certain things, please clutch your pearls. Nobody is saying speak these things into my life or to your life. I'm just being honest about where I am. And where I am is that I am dealing with episodic depression. And I have done all the things. I am the hugest self I call myself the self care queen, right? I will indulge in all the self-care things. And yes, some of those things are fun when you go get a massage and you go get a facial and you do all those things. Those are fun things. But I'm talking about the type of self-care when you're like really having a moment and you're like, you know what? I can't go on another second until I figure out what this is. And you know what I discover is in those moments that I say, okay, you know what? Maybe I just need a nap. Maybe I need to take a break. Maybe I need to step away from my computer. Those are the self-care times that matter. Again, all of the fun stuff is fun. It's beautiful. It's great. And you see people romanticizing it on social media and people be all in their feelings about that. But listen, if over social, if over emphasizing and romanticizing self care is encouraging you to have your self care, then I'm here for it. Because when people share those things, it's not to gloat like, Ooh, I'm getting a massage and you're not. And if that's where you're coming from and you're seeing it from that perspective, it's something on the inside of you. For me, and I can only talk about me, and I know most, most people who are in this field or who are in this mindset, they're sharing it as an example to help somebody else. For instance, you know, people don't think that doing something as simple as reading a magazine is a form of self-care. But when you sit down to truly just sit down and have that moment to read a magazine and look at the stories and laugh and, you know, you know, look at stuff and say, okay, I want to put that outfit together. I like that product. I'm going to try it. That is self-care. Do you know how many of us is running on E right now? Like put your hands up in your, in your car, wherever you're at on the treadmill and you are running on E, you is on fumes, you beyond E, right? You on films and you're sitting there saying to yourself, oh my God, I can't get my life together. My mind is racing. I'm all over the place. I got so many things going on because you're on E. And how many of you, when you discover that you're on E, try to just continue going on as if, you know, E ain't going to stop at some point. Well, if you don't, you will just soon discover, if, like my grandmother would say, if you just live a little, you'll discover that running on fumes, running on E, ain't it. And when you start seeing yourself running on E, I promise you, you are going to want to take a step back before life takes a step back for you. So I encourage you, don't allow your cup to get on empty. Do not allow your gas pedal, to, your gas tank to be on empty. Fill yourself back up. Yes, with self-care. Yes, with therapy. Yes, with taking a trip. Yes, with taking some time out for yourself because you are deserving. And especially for my moms, because I know how hard it is to prioritize, you know, to put yourself as a priority. I know how hard it is to say, I'm okay to go take and buy something for myself without also buying 20 more items for your kids. Listen, sis, dads, you may be single dads listening. Listen, they got enough. They got enough. They're not stressing. And you know what's crazy? If your kids are like my kids, we spent so much money on these kids in the beginning of winter, right? We wanted to make sure they had all the things, you know, life is open back up again. We're hitting these streets, making sure they have all that stuff. Do you know my kids be rotating the same sweaters? And I'd be like, what happens to all those clothes we just bought you? So you do all of that shopping, get all those things for them. And they still rotating the same pieces. Friend, go ahead and buy yourself something. Go ahead and buy yourself something real nice. Something that makes you feel amazing. You know, I used to go to Ulta. Now, listen, Ulta, you can always sponsor me. I'm here for that. But I used to go to Ulta as my self-care moment. Nothing like buying a new color of lipstick or replacing the one that you already had or smelling the candles or smelling the scrubs, the body scrubs that is. Not, not, no, not, if you're dealing with a scrub, I ain't telling you to sniff him or her because girls can be scrubs too. I'm saying going into Ulta and smelling all the good things and simply saying to yourself, you know what? Let's go ahead and get that. Let's go ahead and take care of that. And in today's episode, we have a guest and I will be introducing her very soon. But when you are in and you don't feel like you have a support system or you don't have a village, you know, everybody tells you how much it takes a village to raise your kids and you'd be sitting there saying to yourself, that sounds great. But if you were like me, when I first moved here to, to Philadelphia, I had no village, right? And I... I'll say I had a village, but I, I didn't have it in the traditional sense, right? My mother-in-law was, you know, sick and going through her treatments and things that she needed. 
and had always been doing that. So she wasn't one of those types of grandparents that you could just say, you know, take the kids out, you know, for the weekend and she would do those things um, or watch them all the time. We, you know, we couldn't just leave them at, you know, all the time unless it was like at night and every now and again. I didn't have a, a lot of friends who lived in the area that I can call and just kind of hang out without having to go back home. Now, back home was in Lancaster, which is like two hours away. And in the beginning, for the majority of the time when I first moved here, I was going back home because that's where my village was. When my daughter, when my oldest would get sick, I had a village that was dynamic. I had a cousin that would, he worked third shift. He would come and take her until, you know, he would drop her off at the sitter's house or drop her off at my other cousin's house, who again, another one who worked third shift or, you know, my best friend at the time who lived there, she could, you know, and I say best time at the time, I don't mean she's not now, but she could just come in and keep my daughter. Right. And I had friends that would be like, listen, if you need help, I'll come and, you know, I'll help you and get all these certain things done. So I'd never felt alone. I never felt isolated. I never felt any of those things. But when I moved, right, when I moved, I moved up here where my husband's family was. And again, I'm not saying that his family wasn't helpful. I'm just saying they were not a part of my personal, my personal village, right? And what I mean by that was that it wasn't a situation where we were super close. And so I would be like, hey, you know, I need to do certain things. Now, that doesn't mean that they've never helped because there's been plenty of times where they have, but they just wasn't a support system that I personally needed. And at the time, I wasn't really verbalizing what it is that I needed because I didn't even know what I needed. And that's kind of interesting how we sometimes don't know what we need, but we know something's missing. And sometimes the things that we do when we don't recognize what we need is that we have these moments where it looks like we're off. You know, I was having these moments of this postpartum depression where I would be crying one minute, hollering another minute, going through all these different emotional changes. And so to the outside looking in, it looked like, you know what, we don't even want to deal with her. We don't want to fool with her. She's being unrealistic. You know, we don't, we can't have a conversation with her word wise. I can't see where she's at. I don't want to deal with her. So they just removed themselves from me. Now, part of that is because of how I came off. Part of that was because of the things that I was saying. Part of that was because of the things I had said or done. I take full responsibility for that. But I got to the point where once I got my mental health together, I started that process. It was easier for me to see how I needed to formulate my own my own village. And I will say right now, it's interesting how we don't have I don't I don't think we have more people in our village. I think we just see our village differently. Let me give you an example. My parents are almost two hours away, so I don't always get a chance to see them. I have a neighbor that will step in and act like a grandparent. She will step in and act like a mom. Like she just, she blesses us in so many different ways. She gives our kids the hugs and love that they need. They, she makes sure she remembers all of their, their days. Uh, if we were having a birthday party and we had her there, she would come without hesitation. Like she fills in the gap. She fills in the gap. And so that was a, she's a part of my village. When I look at my friends, some of my close friends who they're always like, listen, do you need a night out with your husband? Let me, let me come over and get the kids. They are a part of my village, but I'm able to see the village as it needs to be versus the village I wanted. I wanted my village to look a certain way. And so when you don't see it and when it's not wrapped up in the right packaging, you don't pay attention to it. So you start selling all your your stuff. You don't have enough. You don't have this. You don't have that. I had to stop that. But in this particular week, I'll say with my mental health, I decided to go see my doctor because I was like, listen, hmm, I'm struggling over here. And let me just tell you what that means. Yes, if you go to my Instagram, which you can, that's Toy Time Blog, you'll see me out and about three to four nights a week, right? I'm at the best of the restaurants. I have the best of the cocktails, all the best foods. I'm in some of these restaurants before they even open to the public, it's a great time. Not, I'm not going to knock it. I love it. Right. But behind the scenes, there was also a struggle where there were days where I was like, I can't get out of bed. I am very much upset. I can't get myself together. You know, I'm doing the bare bone minimum and I need to get my life together so I can get up and actually, you know, be an active participant in my life. And so once I discovered that self-care was not enough and not that self-care is not enough, it wasn't enough for what I needed at the time. So although I'm an advocate of self-care, there are many things in addition to self-care that just are necessary. And a lot of those things have to do with, again, taking care of yourself, recognizing that you need a new tool or a tool that you once had, you have to pick it back up. 
Well, I had to pick up going back to my doctor, asking to see her. She saw me, we talked about it, we discovered a plan, and that plan is going to include a little bit of medication. Now, for those who are anti-medication, I get it. There are a lot of drawbacks to taking medication, especially for any type of mental health. However, what I can say to you is, is that you should always do your research and not just accept what your doctor tells you to do. You know your body, you know what you are willing to see and happen in your, in your, in your journey and what you're not. And my doctor and I spent over an hour going back and forth about what it is that I felt that I needed. And you know what? My doctor has always been amazing. This doctor I've had for about last about five years, she's a holistic doctor. So she's going to look at everything not just the symptoms. She's looking at all the parts to it. And so we came up with a plan. Now, the reason why I have no problems of saying that is I'm not really in the, in the mindset now that I'm caring about people, what people would think because, oh, you know, she's taking, taking medication. You know why? Because I don't want you who are listening to have that stigma that if you're taking medication, that something is overtly wrong, that you're not good enough and that you failed yourself because you needed some extra help. Medication doesn't have to be for everything. It could be something that you choose for however long you and your doctor discuss. And again, you are not a failure of anything. You are doing exactly what you were supposed to do. You're supposed to see a need. You take and advocate for yourself. You speak up, shouting out to my therapist who helped me between him and my doctor. I mean, we have a great team. My husband is super supportive and that's all I can ever ask for. Now, if you've ever listened to any of the episodes before, you know that my husband and I didn't always see eye to eye when it came to this mental health journey. Um, And when I took medication for the first time, this was, my son is 11, so we're talking almost 11 years ago. Mental health wasn't a huge component of everybody's thinking process. I think it was just in the, the surface of people being okay to speak out about it, but really hadn't touched the surface that it is now. And back then, to be honest with you, I even felt a level of shame, like, oh my gosh, um, this is happening, um, you know, and what do I do? And I was ashamed because I didn't want anybody else to know. I didn't want anyone to know that I was struggling. I didn't want anyone to know because, you know, we love to just dress up and put things and look cute and look good on the outside when our whole inside is crumbling. Listen, if I don't look good to you on the outside, but my inside is straight, I would have done my job. That is where I'm at now. I don't know if it's because of age and stage, but I'm not more, I'm more concerned about my insides than I am my outsides. Now I'm not saying I'm letting my outsides look raggedy because I'm gonna keep myself up, but I'm gonna make sure that I keep my life together, that I keep my mindset clear, that if I notice something is wrong, that I try to take care of myself and do what's necessary. So that's the journey that I'm on now. In today's episode, we're going to talk to an amazing guest who, again, she's moved from one country to another. Now, I was over there struggling moving from city to city. I mean, is Lancaster to to Philadelphia is drivable, right? And to be honest with you, two hours ain't really that deep. I've driven 12 hours, 10 hours, and everything else in between. And I actually like long distance driving anyway. But have you ever moved from one country to another, had to deal with new uh people in your life, you know, navigating a new system, navigating a new city, also navigating the ways in which the culture, because culture actually changes things too. People think that moving from country to country or city to city has to do with just environment or location, but learning new cultures as you go from one country to another. So we have Christelle Pilat, who is a career optimization coach and the founder of the Freedom Catcher Academy and a mother of three. Christelle moved from France to Germany for work and experienced a different side of being an expat from the famous Emily in Paris. Culture clash, missing her friends and family, bringing up three children without her usual village was a high price to pay. Christelle created a special program and has dedicated the last seven years of her life to helping her clients, especially women, to create profitable careers, rediscover themselves, and live a fulfilled life, both professionally and personally, especially as an expat. So we are going to listen to Christelle. She is going to share with us her story, and you may see some similarities because it doesn't matter where you are in the world, when you feel like you're a woman who does not have support or you don't have the support that you are normally used to, trust me, it doesn't matter if you're here in the United States, if you're in Germany, if you're in France, or if you're in Africa, I promise you, we all need to have a village and villages of people that surround you with love, care, and concern is the most important thing. 
one thing you'll listen to when you hear the conversation too is us talking about our spouses and like how do you how do you deal with when your spouse doesn't support you in the way that you feel that they should right so to all my women who are going to get married who desire to be married trust me the the journey doesn't stop once you get married that's when the journey starts a lot of people put so much emphasis on the wedding day they get all the right flowers they get all the res the reservations together they get transportation all kinds of things popping and getting it all beautiful but the real work is when you say I do and after the honeymoon phase you've got to be able to keep the honeymoon phase going on when you're still learning that person living with that person learning how to grow with that person and remember marriage is a mirror so if you're not ready to see yourself while you're pointing the finger about what your spouse didn't do there's always 15 that's coming back to you so that you can re-examine yourself and I don't think people talk about that as much when they talk about marriage but you don't have to be married to listen to this episode this is the episode that's going to help you to to learn how to achieve the sanctity of learning what it is that you need and stepping out and taking courage when you don't have courage or when all you have is courage to go from one place to another. And you can fit that in any place of your life. That could be with a new relationship. That could be at your job, taking a leap of faith to either leave your job, stay with your job or advance. Trust me, if you listen, there's always going to be wisdom being dropped no matter where you are. And I thank you for listening and let's get into this conversation. All right, Conversations with Toy Family, I have a treat for you for the entire month of February. I don't know how we did it, but we have a guest. Uh, we have Christelle here with us, and you've heard her bio. She is just absolutely amazing. We have a lot to talk about. We are going to talk about you know, going from one country to another. We're going to talk about women. If you are, listen, if you're a woman and you're tuning in, I want you to lean in a little bit because we're going to talk about how do we established like professional fulfillment like how do we feel like we're doing our absolute in the jobs that we're trying to you know be in so we're going to talk about that we're always going to talk about self-care you already know i'm going to ask christelle what is her self-care go-to we always end on self-care because it's important for us to remember that while we're getting our careers while we're taking care of other people we've got to find time for ourselves there is a balance and making sure that we are just as much as okay as we put into the energies of all the things that we have going on so, Christelle, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me with you. Really, really excited about this talk today. All right. So let the people know you went from going from France to Germany. How was that? How different was that? What are the things you learned with that? Uh, well, I moved to from France to Germany. It's almost 20 years ago. So in one okay. month, it's going, be, it's going to be 20 years ago. Wow. Um, and so I, I just wanted to move there only for a few years. It was so my new job. I found a job in Germany. It's not because I wanted to go to Germany. It's just I wanted to go abroad. I didn't want to stay in France. Okay. Um, and for me, this move was kind of easy because I did some other moves before. Like I went in England or in China. Um, and um, I think the, the biggest thread that I ever um had for me it was only like a, a two month internship in uh, England I was 19 it was the first time I I I went in another other country my English was really poor I wasn't sure that I could speak out like one sentence and I was like oh my god oh my god and I couldn't sleep during one week and was like completely um afraid about that and he went, it went well. So I came back kind of strong. And after this very terrifying experience, it was easy for me to move to Germany or to move to England or to, to China or to come back to Germany because I, I have been like different kind of time in Germany. So um, that was not so difficult. And like Germany, seems to be very very close to France we are a neighbor right so we right. are very close so we think so because I have been in China and so on I thought well German is going to be fine and my German was okay so I, I knew that I could somehow use it um, right. so it was okay so this move was okay <laughs> now this is not like the Emily in Paris this is a whole <laughs> different <laughs> this is not like Emily in Paris this is like a whole different level of adjusting 
How was that? You know, I know you said that it was easier because again, once you took that first leap of moving when you were 19, when they removed, it became easier. Have you found any difficulty or things that you may have struggled with, with coming from France to Germany? Was there anything that, that was altogether different that had some time to adjust to? Yeah, and still I have some 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 kind of difficulties still now. So 20 years later, and my husband is German, so I do have German That's culture helpful. at home. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, well, um, um, so German people are kind of cold. Um, so there is a lot of nice things in Germany, but this one thing is not easy to be in close contact with German people. Um, they, they are kind of cold and they have the distances at the beginning and in France, um, it's a little bit kind of more easy going. So you can speak with people in the supermarket or at hotel, you can do some jokes and, and it's not not doesn't have to be long talks or whatever, but you have this very uh, quick contact and it's really nice. Oh, well, mm. I, I like it. <laughs> right. Um, and it's something that in, in Germany you don't really have. So they have like this, they don't smile mm. um, or they don't smile easily. Um, and even if they are really nice with you, they are doing something nice. You have the impression that they don't do it because they want to do it it's because they have to do it okay. so there is this kind of pressure there uh, and I still feel it so when I go somewhere else and I come back in Germany like oh yes we're back to this right yes yeah so there's no almost like they don't they're more stoic they don't really come off as warm even if they are warm they just have this stoic personality Exactly. So sometimes they do very, very nice things. So they let you go first. So it's like, oh, that's nice. I didn't ask for that. That's nice. But they are doing that in a very serious way. Like, like okay. hurry up, hurry, go, go. Yeah, 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 go. Yeah, but I didn't ask for nothing. So if you don't want to do that, don't do it because I don't want to see your um, angry face somehow. Um. So, but it's, it's, I don't know why it is like that. I, I try to, um, because the, the schools are very nice being school. So in France, it's very far, it's far more strict at school. Mm. And in Germany, it's far more, um, it's really like uh, they, they, they give space for the personal, uh, for the individuality of the child and so on, which is not the case in France. In France, it's really strict. And we believe that it's the, the tendency, the contrary, is that the people in Germany are very strict and French people are very easygoing. But, but for the, from, from the school system, it's the contrary. But afterwards, at work, I don't know, it's, it's changing, it's moving. French people are more easygoing, like we are going to find a way. And Germans are more like it this way, there is the rules, we have to follow the rules. Mm. That's very interesting. It's probably cultural too. It probably has something to do with this, the culture of being in Germany. Um, have you, I know that you, you know, with the stoicness, how have you been able to socialize if that's the case? How do? how did you find friends? Do you have friends? Do you have a support system there in Germany outside of your husband? Hmm. I do have a lot of friends. Um, well, I started to move in Germany. Uh, I was in like a small, uh, a small uh, city, and my problem was that I was um, a sales manager, and I had to cover almost all Germany. So I was always driving around, and it was not possible for me during the week to have some social contact. Because okay. I was always driving in my company, I did a home office, and my company was in France. So okay. um, this. This moment, it was kind of complicated because at the end of the day, so, and I am an introvert. Mm, so am I. I'm actually, a lot of people don't think that I am, but I actually am very much an introvert. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's why the, the first years, it was complicated. So I was always like working during the week, traveling around and during the weekend, trying to, to rest a little bit and maybe to go back to friends or to have some friends go, uh, coming to me. Um, then I moved to Frankfurt and Frankfurt is very more international. So I really liked it because I felt more at, so, um, at the right place mm -hmm. because a lot of people were around not coming from Germany. So I had first a lot of um, foreigner friends. And, so um, 
how, so you're a mom, um, you know, people always talk about village. So how do you create a village in Germany? How did you create, how do you, what is your village like in Germany? How did, how do you create that? Because, you know, but, there could be someone that's listening that may be deciding to move from out of one country to another. And it's like, how do you create a village of people that you may not even know? Like you have to start from scratch or how do you, how do, you do that? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. Well, there is, a, so now it's completely different that like 20 years ago, because 20 years ago, we didn't have like these social media things. So it was all, okay, you have to move. <laughs> right. You have to meet with people. So in my case, it was a lot about, um, yeah, uh, uh, language. So I went to, to, to learn Spanish. Then I could, um, uh, meet some friends there coming from England and somewhere else. And then we decided to, to gather together. Or uh, at some point I had my husband anyway. Um, so, and my husband, I, I found my husband in China and not in Germany. So okay. I knew him from, from, long time ago and at some point we met again and then we find a way to stay together um so he has his own friends so mm-hmm. i could um i could connect with his own friends um yeah and then slowly but surely so you you find your ways it might depending on the people right so it might take a little bit of time for some of us uh and some i know now so there is on facebook there is so many groups helping people to feel at home wherever they come Mm -hmm. um that is far easier now just go in this kind of group and try to find nice people you can even meet online before and then it's okay when i'm going to come i'm going to have already like a social um circle waiting right. for me and that's great um yeah 20 years ago it was not possible okay so you're saying if you're going to another country you should try to find friends that are online that are in groups on facebook or any type of social situation so that you can already establish yeah a friendship you- or before you get to where you got to be and people love doing that. So if they are in this kind of groups, it's because they are happy to help you to come and to integrate yourself and to open their own circle to to you. So yeah, definitely it's some one thing that I would uh, suggest to do. And then to just take part of the activities here, like trying to do some sport or whatever you like. Mm-hmm. So it has to do to be something with what you like to do because of the energy you are going to put into it. And that comes back to what you said at the beginning. So it's really important to, to put your energy in the right things in order to get energized and then to continue to do that. I like that. So in case you didn't, you missed that. She's saying basically, you know, if you find the activities that you love, you'll gravitate towards it more. And then you'll meet people in those activities. I love that. Because sometimes I think we forget how simple of, you know, like for me, I like to go to bookstores. So if you go to a bookstore, you'll fe- meet other people who are at bookstores too. And then you right. can formulate, you know, friendships there. Yeah. Yeah. And you you are sure that you have one common point, which are in, the, in your case, the books. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Now, how, you know, you have been helping um, people and women specifically for years, trying to formulate their professional career. Can you share with just a few tips of things like how you would uh, help a client to do that? Mm -hmm. Sure. So we first look at your energy level. Mm -hmm. Uh, Why it is so? Because what I have seen in my, for my own experiences, but as well, what I can see around is that when you have a certain kind of energy level, so people are going to see you and to see you for, for what you are. Um, and the kind of personality you have. And then they are going to say, oh, I like your personality. I would like to work with you. Right. So they are more inclined to look at, okay, I like you. Maybe you don't have the skills, but that's okay. We are going to work around that. We are going to find solutions, but I want you as a person. And in order to be seen, so you have to have a higher energy level. Um, because if your energy level is low, so it's like in the average of other people, then nobody's going to see you really. So it's really to have your own energy and to be seen and the way you are uh, with your strengths and your weaknesses as well. It's all good because then people will say, okay, I want this kind of person. It's exactly what I need. So we look at that, how to raise your energy level. And we look at what you love to do, what energizes you, and what um, drains you. 
because that helps you, first of all, to put more of what you love in your life, which is you are going to have more fun, you are going to have more energy, and at the same time, you are going to spot what you what you are good at. Right. And it's one, one way to start to, to see, oh, okay, maybe in this direction, I can do something special. Or at work, I love to do that. So maybe I should do that even more. Because if I do that even more, I'm going to have more fun and more impact and more success. And it's all what we have, we want to have, right? So right. impact, success is fun, that it's good. So it's really the first step. So we look at what do you love to do? What energize you? Where do you feel engaged? And then there is one way to go for that. And then we look at different kind of career that you could do around that. Okay. So then you found their energy. You found that you find maybe a career path. How does, how do you help them step into that? Cause what if they've had a, a brief of time where they haven't had anything and now they want to go into something that really energizes them. How do you get them going? Yeah, exactly. So that's a good question. So at the moment when you see, oh, okay, I have this kind of idea or this kind of project, this kind of jobs um, that I, I think I want to do. So it's, the question is, okay, here you are. It's my reality where I am right now. And here it's where I would like to go. And what are the steps? What is what do you what do you have to do? So maybe you have to go back to school, maybe not at all. Maybe you have to um, to ask from from specific support or to learn some new skills, or maybe not. So you really to look at okay, what do you need as resources, as time, as energy? What kind of roadmap you can uh, create from that, and and then to look at okay. Do I want to do that or not? So like some people told me, okay, I am, I don't know, engineer and I want to be a surgeon. Right. Okay. So in this case, if you really want to, to be a surgeon, you have to study, to, you have to go back to school and maybe for 10 years or something like that. So it's like, whoa, as a, are you motivated to do that? And this lady says, yes, I am going to do it. You go, oh, okay. Right. And then she, it's her path now. And some of the ladies have said, now I don't want to go back to the university. Then it's okay, how, what, what do you like in being a surgeon? And how can you translate that in maybe another kind of career? And how can you get there without going to the university? Or maybe how can you um, help like a surgeon to be around a surgeon in order right. to get the same feeling? but not to go back to the university. Maybe as an engineer, maybe you can find something. So I don't know. And that is what I love. It's because usually we don't know what's going to pop up as a new career. And we don't know what kind of new ways, new um, new roadblock they have, they, they will build. It's really, we have to look at the reality. We have to ask a lot of questions. We have to look at... Um, yeah, so what the environment is able to take, right? Uh, because a lot of them are moms, for instance, they need maybe the money of their job, maybe not. So it's really depending on the environment as well. So how have you ever had like a client that you were working with, you know, they they're figuring out, you're trying to figure out how you can get them into the field that they want to be in. Have you experienced where you've maybe had pushback from the client, you know, they want to do something, you offer them something and they're just kind of like, eh, I don't know if how far I want to go with that. Have you ever had that resistance from anyone? So until now, so what we do is that if you have only one project, if you have only one road, uh, if I ask you, okay, Toy, what do you want to do next, your next step? Then your brain is going to find something very rational, very safe, because your brain doesn't want to put you into any kind of trouble. Right. So if you do that, you are going to have a lot of resistances. But what we do is something different. So we look at three different things. We look at the safe project, something that you would be safe. It's maybe not so... Um, exciting but it's okay right and then we look at some different things and there your brain is okay to work with it because he knows that he have the safe solution somewhere 
And then your brain is open, uh, open enough to say, okay, now we can play. Now we can see what is possible. And having this safe solution, so usually the brain is okay to work on the other solutions. And we don't move until we feel um, we feel good about the solutions. And for some of my clients, sometimes they say, okay, I'm not, because some of them, they want to be an entrepreneur and they are, um, they are in a job right now. So it's a huge step to do. And maybe they are not going to do that in one step. Maybe they are going to, to need two or three steps. So maybe they have to take the safe solution first, but maybe with less hours and with a higher salary in order to be able to switch to um, the career or the um, activity, the project they want to do. So it's really depending of, of the people, again, where they are at, what kind of safety, uh, security, stability needs they have in order to play with all that. I love that. Um, what are some basic things that people can do? Like, what are some basic questions that they need to ask themselves as they're preparing to go in from one career to another? What are some of the basic things that they should be asking themselves? Um, they, they can ask themselves, um, okay, if, if they have children, something like that, uh, they can ask themselves, what kind of lesson would I, would I like to give to my children? What kind of value would I like to, 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 to leave for myself? Because that's going to give one idea. If you like, if you are very into, um, ecology, um, then it's, maybe not really the right idea to go into chemistry, uh, <laughs> the chemistry, right. um, for, for instance. So, um, so one question is, okay, what kind of ideal life I would like to have? So it's, first of all, I think the, the biggest thing is like to allow ourselves to just dream, to dream big and to see what's popping from that. If I dream big, do I want a big villa? a big, um, a lot of money do I want to have? What kind of friends do I want to have? What kind of activity, if it's for, in order to help people or to develop things, do I want to continue to work or not? So really to try to find out, okay, what it is, what I really want. And when we have that, it's okay, how? <laughs> how can I do that? But the first question is, so what kind of things energize me? What kind of things drains me? What kind of people energize me or drain me? Um, so to 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 define the context I want to work in, do I want to have like uh, working in a team or working alone or so this kind of stuff? Yeah. Okay. And one of my questions has to do with um, you talked a lot about mothers. Um, and I wanted, I know when I, when I first started having my kids, um, when I first had my kid, I, my first child, I worked the entire time. I worked after she was born and then I got laid off because of course downsizing in the company. And one of the hardest things was then trying to, after being out of work, I think I was out of work, not even a year from, and, and I had another child, uh, that getting back into the flow of going back into the workforce, like, what is some advice that you would give women as they're going back into the workforce? Maybe they need to pivot and find something different, like I had to, or um, just going back into the workforce after having a child. What yeah. is some of the advice you would give them? That's a good question. Uh, I know that I, I, it's where I have seen a big, big difference between France and Germany. So in France, usually um, mother, they continue to work even if they have one, two, three children. So they don't really stop working. They stop working a few months, two, maybe three, maybe, but that's it. And then they, they continue to work. So it's kind of normal, kind of usual. In Germany, it's the contrary. Uh, mother cannot work more or less. So it's it's a little bit like if you work full time and you have children, something is wrong with you. You can have, you cannot have a work or career and children. You have to choose. There is a lot of German people or German women choosing between a career and a family, mm. which I found is a pity. 
And I have seen that there is a lot though, that is different dep depending on the countries. But like in Japan is a little bit like that too. In India, definitely as well. In Germany, um, in France is completely different um, and so on. So, um, and it's one, one of my fight. I really believe we can have all, I have three children and I work full time. So it's right. working and my husband as well. So, um, it's working and my children are not that old. They are between eight and 13. Yeah, um, same as me. Okay, cool. <laughs> so it's working. It's possible. Depending on the country, it might be more, more or less difficult, uh, depending. Uh, so if you, you feel the social pressure on you because you want to work again, it's not going to ease the fact that you want to come back. Um, so I would say, yeah, some of us, maybe we have to change. Um, we have to change our work. So like uh, one, one of my clients, she was a soccer um, travel manager. So she helped the soccer team to, to travel around and to organize that. So now she has two children. She moved to Germany. So she, can, she cannot and she doesn't want anymore to travel all around the world. So she decided to redefine what she wants to do. And um, and to do it again, the idea is again, so what kind of things I want to do, what kind of skills I have or I continue to want to use. And if there is some skill that I don't have or I don't, it's, it's not, I, I have to refresh them, then maybe I can refresh them before starting again. Um, right. Yeah, so this, this kind of thing that the skin, the skills and experience that I have, the thing that I want to continue to use, the thing that I have to refresh, and how can I organize home in order for me to be able to, to be full of energy and not to do everything? Because if you are really the center of your of your of your family, so it's it's not easy to 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 support everything, right? So uh, right. the family, the husband, the the um, prayers, and and so on. So it's a lot of things to 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 carry with you. And then there is other ways to organize all that. Yeah, I, I like that because again, if your energy is not there, you shouldn't really go back into anything, regardless. And um. But when you're a mom, and again, you like you said that you're the center of the home, you have to find a way to also uh, find ways to put that energy back into yourself, but find a way to to say, okay, listen, I'm the energy of this home, but I also want to go do this. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to do this, I'm going to need certain skills. So you may need to take some time to, again, get those skill sets so that you can go into that field that you want to go to so that you can then maintain it all. But it has, it does have to come from a place of desiring it because sometimes exactly. when we do things that we, you know, you can do things that you have to do. I'm not against it, but when you're constantly putting yourself in a situation of have to versus finding something that you thrive in and you can try to make something of it or doing something temporarily that you have to do till you can get to that spot where you want to go. Exactly. That's, That's the different. thing you got to worry about too. Yeah. And your energy is different then. Mm -hmm. And then it's it's all everything is easier. And for for at home, so what I love to do is like to to help the mother to to work on the team building at home. Uh, in order to have a team, I have so many moms telling me I feel like kind of alone in my own family. Like I am here to support everyone, but nobody asks me how I'm doing. So if I'm fine. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> And I like, and I, sometimes I really feel, can feel that I feel so sad because they feel like completely exhausted and nobody see that they are completely transparent, invisible, and, and they give their energy for everyone. But, but the people around, like the children, husband and so on, they cannot really appreciate the mm -hmm. effort and the energy. And it's a pity because again, it can be completely different. So I have only boys at home. So I am the okay. only girl in my home, uh, home. They are just great. So they are helping for a lot of things. And if I ask them support, they are here. They give me the support and I am not the center of the family. I am a member of the family. I am an important member. Maybe I am one of the leader of the family, mm -hmm. but um, my husband is another leader of the family. So we are two leaders. Right. And we have like three other like mini leaders and right. trying them best at some time. Yeah. Right. Everybody's coming together to support one another. 
So now that brings me to my conversation of self-care. What do you do that brings you joy? What are your self-care go-tos? So um, like this morning, I wake up at five. It's not it's not always like that, but I just felt like it was good. And so I decided to take time to uh, read a book, to meditate, uh, just to take this time for me. So it's something that I love doing. Um, I decided as well. So regarding my work that I am not available all all the time. So a long time ago, it was like, okay, if you, if you want to, to speak with me, so at six morning, I'm going to be there. And at 10 evening, I'm going to be there. <laughs> so right. now I decided to just have a frame and to look at if I feel good about it. So if I feel that I want to have a client at six morning, so I'm going to have this client, I'm happy to have it. But it's more like you said before, like if I feel doing it, I'm doing, I'm going to do that, but I don't have to do that. Right. It's, it, it's not um, what I want to. So um, I just, if I want to, to sleep, uh, at some point during the day to, to just have a, like a, a small time for me I just take it without thinking that much because I know that afterwards I'm going to have more energy so I do I, I have my routines but I change my routines depending of how I feel about it so I don't push myself like for instance right now I'm doing a lot of yoga like 10 minute sessions yoga morning evening because I just enjoy it a lot right now. But maybe in two weeks, I will say, no, I don't feel like doing it. And it's okay. I'm going to do something else eventually. So I really try to look at what I need. And um, and if I need some support, if I need, you know, the, the five language of love. Mm-hmm. So if I if I need some appreciation, so I'm going to, to, to go to my husband, okay, okay, look, I need some appreciation. So just give me like some, some nice words. And if he cannot find any, I'm going to tell him what I need, what I want to hear. Right. And then he's going to say it and to laugh and we're going to laugh because he's going to think, I don't know, well, it's not really appropriate or whatsoever, or it's again, so girly things or, but that is just one moment where I, I feel that I get that. Right. And we have like this moment, this connection, and then it's gone. Oh, yesterday I asked for a message and I get one. So, well, I'm glad that you you again. And I'm and I'm and for those who are listening, the fact that you were able to say, listen, if I feel like I'm not receiving something, especially from my spouse, I'm able to say, let me go and ask for it because I feel like sometimes women think that they're just supposed to or their their spouse is supposed to be a mind reader and they're not. If there's something that you need and you're not receiving it. You need to also be okay with asking for that, getting that from your spouse. And if you go to your spouse and you ask them for that and they're not willing to give it, then that's a whole nother conversation. But you should be able to say, I need this from you. To, yeah. You know, I need my cup filled this way. Can you, this is what I need. And they should be exactly. able to meet you and do it. Yeah. And and to add on that is that I, at the moment I decided to change my career, my husband wasn't really happy about that. Uh, I was mm-hmm. an engineer. I, I earned a lot of money and then I wanted to change for ca- co- coach, self-employment and so on. He was like, no, I don't want you to go in this direction. And I said, well, I'm going to do that, whatever you want. So I am my own boss, my life, my boss. So I'm going to do that. Right. And um, and then the problem is that I was terrified. So I asked him to support me and he couldn't. So he wasn't not able to support my new journey. And at that moment, I couldn't really understand that because I thought, okay, I am asking. So he should give me Mm -hmm. what I need, right? Because husband as they are there for support, right? right? Uh, But at that moment, I understood that maybe sometimes we ask for things that they are not able to give. So, and Mm -hmm. it was indeed something that I wasn't able to give myself neither. I needed support. And in my little so brain, I couldn't support myself neither. That's why I, I desperately asked him to support me. And I was really upset because I couldn't have that from him. Mm-hmm. So um, at some point I understood that and said, okay, that's fine. It's not because he's not able to support me that he's not able to love me. Right. That's two different things. And then I'm going to find my support somewhere else. 
I and then I, I, I grew my, my network of my, so I have a lot of coach around me now and they're all helping me and so on and some other friends and so on. So I decided to find the support somewhere else. But still, I understand that my husband loves me and that it's two different things. And I think as well, sometimes it's what the, the, the problem that we have, women, we believe that they have to be completely 100% with us. But they have their struggle as well, right? They have right. their emotions and they can't. Yeah. And I'm glad that you recognize that instead of just being like, okay, this marriage is now over. Since you couldn't support me here, then I got to, we got to wrap this up. We're done. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I was kind of close to that, right? I get, listen, I get it. I hear it. <laughs> I hear it. You might've been close, but God, thank God you didn't. Like it still worked out. And thankfully you were able to find that support because it's nothing better than to thrive where you want to thrive and the energy yeah. you want to put in um, than just doing something just because it works and it does it doesn't bring you joy. That's not what you want either. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, thank you so much, Christelle, for being here and having this amazing conversation. In the show notes, listen up. I will have websites where you can find uh, Christelle, where you can get some information. Maybe you need her to be one of those support systems for you. She has an amazing program that is going to help you uh, to get where you need to be. I will have all of her information in the show notes. All you have to do is click it. You got to just hit the button. <laughs> It'll get you there so that we can make sure that we're doing our best selves, that we're not going into this whole rest of this year now that we just started and feeling unfulfilled in these movements that we're in. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we have as much fulfillment as we possibly can. And it starts with what we're doing. It's something that you're doing every single day should find some way to bring you joy somewhere. Yeah. And if you have more joy, then you can give more joy. So it's one way to change the world, right? So absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So what did you think? I hope that this episode inspired you in some way. I hope that you are trying your best to show up for yourself every single day. And just because you look good on the outside doesn't mean that you're not having issues on the inside. Also keep in mind that as you matriculate and you're going through life and struggles come, it doesn't mean that you're not worthy of the life that you're trying to move towards. It just means you need a little help. And you may need a little help with the village around you. You may need some understanding from people that are in your life. Sometimes you unfortunately may discover that the people in your life may not be who they're supposed to be, but I'll give you one suggestion. If you're dealing with mental health issues and you're seeing people in your life that's not gravitating towards you the way you want, before you write them off, focus on your health first. Yes, put the mask on your nose and your face first. One of the first things I did was trying to figure out if I was going to leave my husband or not because he didn't give me the love and support that I needed. Well, the reality was, is that there were some things he needed to do to do better in what he was doing, but there was a blotch parts of it that wasn't seeing the help that he was giving me in his own way, because all I was concerned about was it going my way. Listen, I'm the type of person that likes to control as much as I can, right? But life has been teaching me ever since I've become a mom, for instance, that the more you control, life is going to show you what it can do. The first thing you need to do is put that mask over your face first before you start figuring out to cutting people off and doing all those things and make sure you take care of you, get you together, dive into your self-care, talk to your family doctor, talk to a therapist or even a psychiatrist, whatever you may need, it's well within reach. It may be hard and difficult to see. It may not come out in the way that you want it to be, but I promise if you just keep on with the journey, it will get a little bit easier. You are not alone if you are suffering from any type of mental health issue. Trust me, you're not. It doesn't matter how much money you make and how much you don't have resources or whatever the case may be. Listen to me. I promise you, life does get better even when you're at your worst party. Listen, I was at some hard, some difficult moments in life, but I promise you, if you keep on trying, keep on getting yourself back up. Don't get distracted by all of the things that seem to fall when you try to get back up because I'm telling you that's when your, your breakthrough is going to come. And you may be saying, I'm tired of hearing that. I want to see it. Start with you. Stop looking for it to come in other forms and focus on what it is that you may need. Are you taking care of yourself? Are you eating well? Are you moving, getting some exercise? Start there. Get focused on what makes you happy. Happiness is not something that you discover in an item. It doesn't matter it does that you take a vacation. You know, everybody wants to go on vacation, but you got to learn how to live life and, and see you and take care of you beyond those things. Listen, you're not alone. 
I'm sending all my love to you no matter where you are in the world. Trust me, it gets better before it gets, and sometimes it gets worse before it gets better, but I know for a fact it gets better. If I didn't think that, if I didn't know that, if I hadn't experienced it, not just something someone else told me, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be hearing me now. If I would have let go and decided that I didn't matter and that life wasn't worthy, I wouldn't be able to see my beautiful children grow up in the way that they need to grow up. I wouldn't be able to go outside and see the sun come out and touch my skin. I wouldn't be able to see the advancements in my career that I've been able to see just from hard work. So yes, it gets tough sometimes, but you are tougher. I love you. Have a great weekend. Make sure you do something good for yourself. Have the most amazing weekend. You know, we're going to be back with you next week. We have actually, no, we're not. We actually are going to take a break and then come back, but you never know. Might just throw in a bonus episode next week. Let's take a little, we'll see. Stay tuned. Make sure you share this episode with someone else, especially somebody who's feeling a little dark right now. Trust me. I hope that my voice is a light. I hope that the people in your life is a light. And remember, you are the light too. You just can't see it for now, but it's there. Send in love. Thank you as always for joining me. And I know that even in the deepest or joyful conversations, that there's something we can learn and apply. Until next time, I hope that you are doing better. If not, we will be back to talk some more and handle it. Peace to you and yours. Stay grounded.